COVID hospitalizations in the U.S. have reached an all-time high. I'm Michael George with the surging cases, the staffing shortages, and a nationwide blood shortage. A new year means new fitness goals, but is COVID-19 standing in the way of some of those goals? I'm Wiley Jahari with what residents across the valley are doing to stay fit and healthy. How are schools keeping students and staff safe? I'm Luis Lopez, and tonight we'll tell you how one local district is trying to stay COVID-free as cases continue to rise in our area. 13 on your side starts now. Good evening and thank you so much for choosing to be with us tonight on 13 on your side. I'm Scott Gross. Now, despite a surge in COVID cases, local elementary school students are back in the classroom this week. The push for normalcy has schools on high alert. Luis Lopez shares what local schools are doing in order to try to keep students from going back to online learning. Yuma County has seen a steady increase in COVID cases. So as students go back to school, schools are following the same protocols to keep students and staff safe. It's back to class for thousands of elementary school students across Yuma County. And for now, not even COVID is stopping them from hitting the books. But the numbers are alarming. The county is seeing the highest number of cases per week since December 2020, currently averaging nearly 106 new cases per day for every 100,000 residents, according to COVIDactnow.org. On Monday, District 1 in Yuma welcomed students back. The district says even with the surge, protocols will stay the same, at least for now. Things like encouraging mask wearing and social distancing, along with asking parents to check their students daily for any COVID symptoms, will still be in place. But the district also wants to give students a sense of normalcy. So at this time, we're not implementing any strict uh, protocols that, that might um, cancel recess or cancel activities or anything of that sort. Even so, the district says it still understands the seriousness of the surge. We're just on high alert monitoring the situation. Um, all of our policies still remain uh, proven to reduce the spread on campus. One other way the district and county are handling the situation is through testing, which is something even more valuable given how hard it is for many to even get tests right now. We are so fortunate and so grateful to the public health department here in Yuma County for assisting us with the training, providing testing kits. We have um, Currently, we have a decent supply of tests that we can offer our students and staff. Another concern is potentially having to go back to remote learning. Yuma County Superintendent of Schools Tom Tyree says while safety is the top priority, keeping kids on campus is what schools want. I think at this point in time, mm -hmm. what all our school districts are, are trying to do as best they can is to make sure that they do stay open for uh, direct instruction. Both District 1 and the county told me that overall, remote learning isn't being considered right now, but is something they at least feel prepared for should they have to do it again. Reporting in Yuma, Luis Lopez, 13 on your side. Now to California, where the Palo Alto Unified School District is requesting the help of parents to keep in-person learning going at schools. Here's Jocelyn Moran. In 20 minutes, we had 50 volunteers. By the next morning, we had 350. And today, uh, really just barely into day two, uh, we have 670. Palo Alto Unified Superintendent Don Austin says one of their biggest challenges now is staffing, but they're committed to staying open with the help of parents. Austin says parents can choose to do light custodial work like emptying trash cans and wiping desks. They can monitor lunch lines and they can help teachers in classrooms. While volunteer cannot uh, serve in the substitute role, they can allow us to combine classes and have enough adults in there to supervise and to still provide help. Austin says they'll need to show proof of vaccination and wear a mask, but they won't go through a background check. They do not have to go through a background check. They um, do not need to be fingerprinted because they're not alone with students. The hope now is that they won't have to shut down in-person learning. For us, we can say now we are going to be open. We have it covered. There is nothing short of a state or county mandate, an order that will shut us down. And if they do that, they better be ready for a fight too. We're, we are staying open. The Omicron variant continues to power an unprecedented global COVID-19 surge. The World Health Organization says over 15 million new cases were reported in the past week, more than 5 million here in the United States. Michael George reports from New York City. 
The latest coronavirus surge is placing a renewed strain on hospitals. Just as we thought we had finally gotten ahead of COVID, the Omicron variant came along. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy declared a public health emergency Tuesday. It's one of 43 states where COVID hospitalization numbers are still rising. It's hard to process what's actually happening right now, which is most people are going to get COVID. All right, and what we need to do is make sure the hospitals can still function. The government's handling of the outbreak was the subject of a Senate hearing. It is a very wily virus. It has fooled everybody all the time. The hearing grew testy at times. Kansas Senator Roger Marshall questioned Dr. Anthony Fauci about his financial disclosure form. The big tech giants are doing an incredible job of keeping it from being public. Uh, We'll continue to to look for it. Where would we find it? All you have to do is ask for it. Uh, You're so misinformed, it's extraordinary. To help tame the spread of Omicron, Pfizer has announced it will have a vaccine specifically targeting the variant. Pfizer's CEO says the company has already begun the manufacturing process and expects the vaccine to be ready by March. Michael George, CBS News. Health insurance companies will soon cover the -the over-the-counter COVID-19 tests. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services made the announcement yesterday. The department says private insurers will be required to pay for eight tests per month per individual, either by covering the cost up front or through a claim reimbursement. The department says a doctor's order, prescription, or office visit will not be required. The test also won't be subject to co-pays or deductibles. The new coverage requirement starts on Saturday. And this leads us to our question of the day. Will you be getting an at-home COVID test when insurance begins to cover it? 60% of you said yes, 40% said no. Thank you to all who participated. San Luis is closing its senior center until further notice due to COVID. The center also had to close its doors last August because of a rise in cases. In a statement, Mayor Gerardo Sanchez says, quote, we must remain vigilant and diligent, adding in part that the health and well-being of the most vulnerable will continue to be the main priority. Let's talk about another priority, our weather. A look outside right now in the RV world of Yuma Skycam. Pretty calm out there right now. We do have some windy conditions throughout the viewing area. Again, some cloud cover out there as well. You may see uh, a break in the clouds here and there and a twinkle in the stars outside. Coming up in your first alert forecast, though, we're going to talk about 80s and the crosshairs. Why? Yeah, we have a possibility to see 80 degree weather this week. I'll let you know when. Our chances for rain, however, are starting to evaporate, but we still have a slim margin where we could see some. And another fantastic viewer weather photo to share with you. A little game of hide and seek, if you will. All of this coming up a little bit later on. It's one of the most popular New Year resolutions and the fastest one to quit. Getting in shape. Eat your gyms across the globe. will Fill up with eager people looking to shed some unwanted weight. In most cases, they discover that keeping the weight off is just more than running on a treadmill. A local trainer at Fuel Fitness shares his take on popular resolutions and even includes one of his success stories. Set realistic goals. You know, moderation. Don't go burn yourself out the first week. You know, and hold yourself accountable. You know, you got to be accountable for your own actions. It's very hard. It's not easy, but it's doable. You know, if, if you have the, the will, you'll get through it. And these guys are very supportive of the coaches, the owners here. So it's, uh, it's great. Fuel Fitness caters their training to the individual and offer both one-on-one classes as well as all-out boot camps for those serious about their performance. Over in the Imperial Valley, a gym in El Centro isn't letting the pandemic stop them from helping locals keep their resolutions while ensuring a sanitized environment. 13 on your side's Wiley Jahari joins us from El Centro and shows us how they're making it all happen. Ivy Fitness had about 900 members at its gym, but when the pandemic hit, it had to close its doors. Now the gym has reopened and has about 500 members, but staff at IV Fitness tells me that their commitment hasn't changed. 
According to Club Intel, 70% of gym members who've returned to their facility believe that management has properly addressed COVID-19 safety concerns. A statistic this local gym is hoping will keep business running and Imperial Valley residents in good shape. We opened a little bit later than a lot of the other facilities because we were waiting, you know, um, just to make sure that everything was safe and that we had a good plan before going into action. This 33,000 square foot gym closed in March 2020 and didn't reopen until April 2021. Now, with cases of COVID-19 going up across the valley once again, the gym says there's a lot of uncertainty. You know, before the pandemic, we were like up and coming. You know, we had a lot of new members. We had a lot of um, plans that were, um, we were in the works and like, it seemed like they were coming to fruition. And then um, when that pandemic hit, you know, it, it hit us all differently. So it was rough like because we didn't know what was going to happen. But many have New Year's resolutions to get fit for the new year. So other gyms like this one are also hoping to increase membership and for COVID cases to hopefully decrease so more locals feel comfortable working out. This is their safe space and we do try to keep them pumped and motivated. One instructor who teaches a class called and C is doing just that. And I want to help them out, you know, keeping physically fit. A Kobe Bryant mural painted by artist Anthony Gentry shines on this wall in hopes to inspire others to be their very best. <laughs> Now, whether you're on or off the basketball court, health experts want you to know it's never too late to pursue a healthy lifestyle. I'm Wiley Jahari reporting from El Centro. I wonder how many shots it took Wiley uh, before he made one. Thank you, Wiley, for that. We stay on the fitness theme with a reminder for you to register for this year's Yuma Territorial Marathon. Everyone's invited, and there is a course for every type of runner, jogger, or walker. The Caberos de Yuma will once again host the full 26-mile marathon as well as the half marathon and even a 10K on Saturday, January 29th. Organizer and Cabero Frank Saldana tells us about what you should expect at this year's event. It's a very uh, fun-filled, friendly, fami uh, family atmosphere. Uh, there's a lot of camar camaraderie. Uh, people like to get together. Uh, whoever's doing the marathon, it's a group of people of like people who like to exercise, who like to be outdoor. Um, also with families, you know, we have very young people out there. We have people with, that are more experienced than life also, if you will, uh, that are like to go out and just run and have a great time. The Caballeros de Yuma would love to see you, and to register, just log on to the Yuma Marathon website. President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris head to Atlanta to reignite a push for sweeping voting rights legislation. I'm Skyler Henry on Capitol Hill with the administration's message and the hurdles here in Washington in their way. Plus, a miracle landing of a medical chopper in Pennsylvania with all on board, including an infant, surviving the pictures of the wreckage are unbelievable and the full story is straight ahead although it seems like any ordinary day it isn't for one extraordinary reason because now with spectrum mobile you get unlimited on two or more lines for 29.99 a line this is a huge deal that'll make you feel larger than life Get unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99 with nationwide 5G included. Call 1-844-955-2999. It's the biggest news in mobile with the best deal ever. Get unlimited talk, text, and data for only $29.99 with no contracts, added taxes, or hidden fees. And nationwide 5G included. Save up to 60% on your mobile bill. Get gigantic savings with Unlimited from Spectrum Mobile for just $29.99. Call 1-844-955-2999 or visit a store near you. Switch today and you too will feel larger than life. Here we go. One week. Seven days. Dozens of concerts. Thousands of country music fans. And me. One week in the life of country music stars. You won't believe what our cameras will catch. Tonight at 10, 9 central on ABC. For as long as he could remember, Come on, ladies. Daniel always put others before himself, like helping the elderly cross the street or holding the elevator door open for his co-workers. Don't worry. I'll get the next one. After you. Or letting his fellow shoppers cut him in line. But ever since Daniel played the new brand tickets from the Arizona lottery, he's able to do more for himself. Play today.
I mean, the whole point of getting into journalism for me has always been about giving a voice to the voiceless and really like making sure that people who don't have opportunity to speak are heard. I feel like that's that's kind of why we're all in this industry and that for me is the biggest like reminder of like, okay, if this person feels like they're not being heard, like we need to tell their story. So I don't think that in local news, it's not about being one-sided, it's about telling both sides of the story and let the viewer decide their opinion. And that's what we're all, that's what we're here to do. This segment sponsored in part by Nationwide Vision, serving Arizona for 35 years. 13 on your side starts now. President Biden and Vice President Harris traveled to Atlanta, Georgia to make the case for Senate passage of voting rights legislation. At least 19 states, including Georgia, have passed 34 laws making it more difficult for people to vote since the 2020 presidential election. Skylar Henry reports from Capitol Hill. The fight for democracy took center stage in Atlanta, Georgia, as President Biden pushed for passage on key voting rights bills. For the right to vote and have that vote counted is democracy's threshold liberty. Without it, nothing is possible. But with it, anything is possible. One measure would update the 1965 Voting Rights Act and force states with a history of discrimination to clear any potential changes to election laws with the Justice Department. There is nothing normal about a law that makes it illegal to pass out water or food to people standing in long voting lines. Another would establish national election standards by, among other things, requiring all 50 states to offer at least two weeks of early voting. President Biden has signaled he's ready to change Senate rules to allow the voting rights bills to pass with a simple majority, without Republican support. But at least two moderate Senate Democrats, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, remain opposed to changing the filibuster rules, while Republicans say the move goes too far. It protects a member of the Senate who represents a minority view or needs additional information before agreeing to proceed. Some voting rights advocates have also expressed concerns. President Biden isn't moving fast enough. What we really want to see, given that he came down here, is that he's got a, a ironclad deal in place. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is expected to force a vote on the filibuster issue on the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday next Monday. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Last night, we showed you the heroic work of the Los Angeles Police Department saving an airplane pilot before a train smashed into his plane. Tonight, more heroism as a medical helicopter in Pennsylvania, densely populated in the neighborhood, crashed. And miraculously, all on board, which included the pilot, a nurse, and an infant, all survived. Here's Errol Barnett on the scene in Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. We're getting numerous calls on this. Just, they're saying by the Drexel. It is being called miraculous. Four people surviving a terrifying helicopter crash near Philadelphia. This medical transport chopper heading from Maryland to Children's Hospital of Philly with a two-month-old baby girl, along with two medical workers and the pilot. Witnesses say the chopper was hovering low, avoiding electrical lines and this church before crashing into the ground. The best way to describe it is a miracle. Obviously, this pilot had a, a great command of the helicopter and was able to land it safely. He took the best interest of the community at hand to make sure there were no injuries, no uh, property damage. So uh, he did an excellent job. Had him hit a line. Not a single bystander was injured, and everyone on board the helicopter suffered only non-life-threatening injuries. About 30 firefighters responded to the crash, expecting much worse. Officials say the chopper had about an hour's worth of fuel left, and crews took steps to prevent it from leaking into the water supply. Can't wait to meet this gentleman and shake his hand for getting this plane down the, the helicopter the way he did. And there was a real rush of help by bystanders here as well. One witness telling CBS News her rideshare driver pulled over to help and was then handed the two-month-old as others tried to extract the pilot. That infant was then driven to Children's Hospital, or CHOP as it's known here, which was its original destination. Errol Barnett, CBS News, Drexel Hill, Pennsylvania. Again, incredible that nobody was seriously hurt in that. 
Also incredible, our weather. Another day in the 70s. Another week we're expecting to be in the 70s. And we also have a shot at 80. What? I'll explain straight ahead in your first alert forecast. At Nationwide Vision, you can get two pairs of eyeglasses for just $99.99, including no-line bifocals. Call 1-800-EYE-CARE or visit NationwideVision.com. Taking care of Arizona's eyes for 35 years. Nationwide Vision. Arizona's come a long way in the battle against COVID-19, but there's still a lot of work to do. Our hospitals are strained because of COVID-19 patients, most of whom are unvaccinated. To protect yourself and to help hospitals care for everyone, we need more people to get the vaccine. It's safe, free, and extremely effective. If you are vaccinated, we need you to get a booster so your protection is up to date. COVID-19 vaccines and boosters save lives. Roll up your sleeve today. Now, the most explosive force in music returns to San Diego. Garth Brooks, Saturday, March 5th, 7 p.m., Petco Park. Tickets on sale Friday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific. One price, $94.95, all inclusive. But only at Ticketmaster.com slash Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks, Petco Park, an incomparable night never to be forgotten. On sale Friday, January 14th, 10 a.m. Pacific. Presented by Amazon Music. Congratulations, you've just gotten engaged but you notice your ring doesn't quite fit your finger the way that you want it to. With Paul Benzel Jewelers, your ring is sized on the premises by one of our five goldsmiths. And we guarantee that when we're finished, your ring will look brand new and it'll fit you perfectly. If you want your ring sized immediately, ask about our 24 hour express service. Visit Paul Benzel Jewelers at 234 West 32nd Street in the Big Curve Shopping Center. Your world is created by what you focus on. It's never too late to adjust your view. Right now at Nationwide Vision, when you buy one pair of eyeglasses, you will receive a second pair 50% off, taking care of Arizona's eyes for 35 years. Nationwide Vision. Breaking news first. Extreme weather first. Border issues first. Agriculture first. Exclusive stories first. If it affects you, your family, your wallet, or your health. 13 on your side. First at four. Join Mercedes Martinez. 13 on your side. It's all first at 4 p.m. Welcome to 13 on your side. And a very good Tuesday evening to all of you across the desert southwest. Again, thank you so much for choosing to be with us tonight. We're still in the mid to upper 50s right now as we take a look outside at the RV World of Yuma Skycam. There is downtown Yuma. That is 4th Avenue South. Some heavy cloud cover still. Uh, that's what's making it look so dark out there right now. We do have some windy conditions as well. Let's take a look at our satellite and radar, show you what we have as far as that cloud cover. This was from 720 tonight. It's really not going too far north. It just kind of sits right on top of us. It is clear to the north, but for the most part, when you look up to the skies, you're going to see, again, mostly cloudy skies that will continue into tomorrow. Our future wind scale does show some gusty winds at times along the Colorado River and also portions of eastern Imperial County. They'll start to die down just around 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, but it'll still linger as well, anywhere between Yuma and YPG on your way up to Quartzsite as well. Our air quality index has taken a uh, hit due to the winds throughout the area. Uh, this is brought to us by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District. Brawley and Westmoreland, the only two readings that are still good. Calexico, El Centro, Nyland, Moderate, and Mexicali, again tonight, under unhealthy conditions in our air quality. Temperatures, again, will stay in the Imperial Valley. 52, Calipatria, 51, Imperial, 52, El Centro, and 53 in Holtville. Across the county and state line into Yuma County, Arizona, the Gila Valley, 59 right now in Yuma, 61 in the foothills, 56 in Summerton, and 58 for those of you down in San Luis. Our viewer photo of the day comes in from Angie Fowler. She was on the Muggins Trail out near Welton, and uh, she captured this. She claims that she captured a face on this mountain with also a halo. So the halo here is a rainbow. You can see right here. The face is right here. There's two eyes, the nose, kind of the hair right there as well. Uh, you have to look for that 
on the uh, weather photo gallery, an up-close look to see that face there. Angie, thank you so much for sharing that with us. To do that, scan that QR code. We've been getting a lot of photos in tonight, a lot of great ones. I can't wait to share them with you. Uh, you scan that, it takes you right to the weather photo gallery, upload your photo from your phone, scan it just like you're taking a photo of it, or you can find me on social media or drop it off like other people are doing at our website, kyma.com slash share. I mentioned 80 degree temps. Here's your seven-day forecast. Another day in the 70s tomorrow, but a decent shot Friday. We have a high of 77 degrees. Yeah, we could, we could reach 80 on Friday, making way for a very nice weekend as well. Same can be said for the Imperial Valley. Two nice days in the mid-70s. A slight chance for maybe some rain on Friday, a 20% chance, but also a chance to hit 80 degrees. Again, 78 as a high, and then the mid-70s as we work our way into the weekend. And we have more prep winter sports action coming your way, including Yuma Criminals Boys Soccer. Could the Crims get their elusive first win of the season? The answer and the highlights straight ahead in sports. Did you know breast cancer kills more than 41,000 people every year in the U.S.? That's 113 people every day. That's unacceptable. African-American women die from breast cancer nearly 41% more than Caucasian women. That's unacceptable. Nearly 250,000 men and women in the U.S. will be diagnosed with breast cancer this year. That's unacceptable. Breast cancer is the leading cause of all cancer deaths for Hispanic women. Breast cancer is unacceptable. 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 Help us save lives. Together with Susan G. Komen, we're committed to reducing U.S. breast cancer deaths by half. And we're going to do it by 2026. Support Susan G. Komen. Join our fight. Save lives. Visit Komen.org slash unacceptable. Failure is unacceptable. Every picture has a story. At Doctors Without Borders, it's our mission to change those stories. Because thousands of children are still dying of measles. We're there with preventative medical care. Because every day, hundreds of women die from causes related to pregnancy and childbirth. We're there to assist hundreds of thousands. Because in some countries, there are only one or two mental health professionals. We're there to provide support, counseling, and clinical care. It's your care and compassion that make this happen. Picture the impact we can have together. If they feel like we're not covering something, we work for them, we work for the public, we work for you know, our community here. And so if, if they feel like we're not covering something or we're not following up on something, they're more than welcome to reach out to us and let us know. and, and keep us informed and let us know what we're not seeing or you know we can't be everywhere so sometimes those viewer comments are important for us to know what it is that you know we might be missing i mean i take the viewers trust very seriously and making sure that i'm doing the best job i can to keep people informed Prep Winter Sports continues its January trek. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Scott Gross. We begin with boys basketball, where the Yuma Criminals are looking to snap a three-game skid as they cross paths with the Cibola Raiders for the first and only time this season. We take you out to Raider Gym, where Coach Kurt Weber and the Crims trying to land that upset against Coach Dennis Ponder and the Raiders. Second quarter, Chaz Bohannon leads the charge up court. No criminals on him, and Bohannon just makes him pay, dropping the wide-open three-ball. Cibola opening up an eight-point lead. Then Trey Banks, he's going to miss the layup attempt. Crims get the board. T. Marie Patterson launches the ball down court to Nick Amador with the wide-open layup underneath. Crimstein within striking distance. A few plays later, Patterson trying to set, but Banks comes over and gets to steal. And then the layup on the other end and also gets the foul. He would then cash in at the free throw line, completing the three-point play. Cibola increasing their lead to 15. Yuma would fight hard, but the Raiders would pull away with the 81-46 win. To the Palace, where Yuma's 
Anais Cook still out as Sean Jones and Lady Krims host Anthony Gurge in the high flying Cibola Raiders opening tip. Rory Hoffmeyer, Sierra Baumhauer refines the Labelza Molina in stride. Bing, bang, boom. Lady Raiders score first. Lady Krims answer. Belinda Gradius will take it herself down the right side of the lane. Finish with the layup. Cibola back on the attack. It'll be Kaylee Holyfield with the spin down low. Finds Rory Hoffmeyer in the paint for the finish. Lady Raiders by two. Yuma hanging tough. Belinda Gradius's pass is going to be tipped, but right back to Alyssa Franco, who drives the lane, and she's going to be fouled. She would make one of two free throws. Crims down one. Lady Raiders start, though, to pull away from there. Sierra Baumhauer with a beautiful floater right here. Oh, just gorgeous. Cibola would never trail and roll 80 to 26. They are now 12 and 2 in the season. The Yuma boys soccer team looking to land a home upset against Lake Havasu. Late first half, the Knights pressing. You'll see him here in just a little bit. The Knights pressing. The missed centering attempt sends up a shot on goal, but Yuma keeper Marco Saldana comes up with a nice save, keeping the Crims in it. They're down 2 0. Yuma trying to get back into it. Forward John Carlo working the far sideline, but the shot attempt would be denied. Right there. Then. Angel Navarro Rodriguez with the free kick, but it would be headed out of the night zone. Crims missing out on a key scoring opportunity, but they would capitalize the bounce. Fakes out the cameraman even, and Jared Leone puts the criminals on the board, closing the deficit to a single goal, but that's as close as they would get. Yuma takes the tough 5-1 loss. They're still searching for the program's first win on the season. In the NBA tonight, the Phoenix Suns defeated Toronto 99-95. The Suns are the first team to reach 31 wins this year. Golden State lost to Memphis tonight, so the Suns now overtake the best record in the NBA by a single game. In men's college basketball, fifth-ranked USC lost to Stanford 75-69, and top-ranked Baylor lost to Texas Tech 65-62. Straight ahead, Garth Brooks is coming to Petco Park in San Diego. How you could win tickets to his upcoming show, straight ahead. Have you heard? Tempur-Pedic sleep is better sleep. With innovative memory foam developed by NASA, Tempur-Pedic mattresses reduce motion transfer. Which means less tossing and turning so you can sleep undisturbed through the night. But which Tempur-Pedic is right for you? Come to Denver Mattress and test for yourself. Or get a free $300 gift when you purchase a new Tempur-Pedic. And rest easy knowing it's backed by our 365-night better sleep guarantee. Shop Denver Mattress today, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. You want to feel important. You want to be a part of something bigger, something that matters and can help change things. You want to feel like you belong. We know. We felt that way too. And that's why we did something about it. We aren't just Army National Guard soldiers. We are normal people just like you. And together, we can make a difference. Take on your legacy. Visit NationalGuard.com to find out more. If something happened to you, what would happen to them? Their home, their education, their future. You need life insurance, and chances are SelectQuote can help you get it for less than a dollar a day. SelectQuote found Jacob 40, a $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. And SelectQuote found his wife Wendy, a $500,000 policy for only $17 a month. Our secret? At SelectQuote, we aggressively comparison shop up to 10 highly rated companies to find you the company with the best rates. We found Gary, 35, a $1 million policy for only $22 a month. Why pay more? Give your family the security they need at a price you can afford. Call 1-800-260-6735. That's 1-800-260-6735. At a price you can afford. SelectQuote. We shop, you save. Here we go. One week. Seven days. Dozens of concerts. Thousands of country music fans. And me. One week in the life of country music stars. You won't believe what our cameras will catch. Tonight at 10, 9 central on ABC. And before we go tonight, Garth Brooks is coming back to San Diego on his stadium tour at Petco Park on March 5th. Now, he is the best-selling solo, solo country artist in American history. KYMA is giving away three sets of two tickets to three lucky winners, and all you have to do is go to KYMA.com and enter before January 13th. 
The winner will be notified by phone on January 14th when the tickets go on sale. Again, go to KYMA.com right now and enter your name, your age, email, and phone number for your chance to win and watch Garth Brooks live in person March 5th at Petco Park in San Diego. Again, you have until the 13th to get that done. So you have tonight, all of tomorrow, and then it's going to be the 13th after that. So if you want to go, make sure you get on to KYMA.com to register. Thank you so much for watching us tonight. I'm Scott Gross. Stay safe out there. Stephen Colbert is next.